I was always terrible at math in school, but history was my best subject. And I think I share that in common with our next guest. I'd like to welcome back Barry Barsamian. Barry, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Now, you've got some wonderful stuff here. And before we get to talking to specifics about this, they're all part of a new museum in San Francisco called the San Francisco History Museum, correct? That's right. Tell it, us all about it. It's right at 449 Powell Street at Union Square. And it, the easiest way to tell you where it is, it's directly across the street from that famous doorman, Tom, at the Sir Francis <laughs> the Strait. Sir Francis Strait, right. But we're on the top floor, the fourth floor of what was once the San Francisco Press Club. So it was a hundred years ago that it was the Press Club. But uh, the owner of Laurie's Diner and Sears Fine Food, Man J. Kim, has had- Two a, icons of their own. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, all about nostalgia, uh, has had a dream and a vision that was to put together a history museum, a new restaurant called the Golden Gate Grill, and a visitor center all under one roof. And that's what we've got. The uh, museum officially opened in December and we've got everything from hippies to Hitchcock so it's the San Francisco History Museum yeah. because it's all about San Francisco history. Right, right. Now uh, correct me if I'm wrong the previous history of that space the press club I've been into their new location, and as I recall, there's a statue in there that when a reporter would put, it was a little dog. I think would, it was a cat, it was and a they cat, called it right. the something cat, and that cat actually is at the uh, university club at the bar up the street. But what you're remembering is when we were there a little while ago, the press club was on Post Street. That's exactly near Post right. Post Trio. And, and, the, and the story went that if you were a reporter and you put your or no, if you were a source and you put your hand on the cat's hat, you head. swore that you wouldn't tell. But if you did, they took a hammer to the cat. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was the yeah. real hard version of off the record. Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah, yeah. So now talk to us a little bit about some of the stuff we have here, which is indicative of the collection you've put together, uh -huh. because you're the curator. I'm the curator, and I've been working with Mr. Kim on his vision and pulling it off, and, and we're a really nice team. Uh, well, some of these things. Uh, this Very is small, I know, but this is something to me because I find this fascinating. Tell well, people what it is. Well, it's a ticket book with a photograph from the original Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915. That's so almost 100 years old. Yes, and what that is, it was the World's Fair in 1915 in honor of the opening of the Panama Canal, and it's why we have the Palace of Fine Arts. It's the only thing it, left of that wonderful. That whole marina was just a, a wonderful, uh, a f beautiful area of, uh, you know, like an amusement area. Right. That's too bad we don't have it. Now this is interesting because I've been a collector of Shirley Temple memorabilia and also her friend for a number of years. She nicknamed that me. That was your parents' first clue that you were getting. Right? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kind of going there. I don't know. I don't know, but there are a lot of other clues. Uh, but Shirley lives in Woodside, and so we've done a whole room all about her life, and it's called Shirley Temple Black humanitarian, politician, and star. So what is Shirley Temple like? Or Shirley Temple Black, I should Shirley say. Shirley Temple Black is a very bright lady and uh, kind and a mom. You know, I, I can remember many phone conversations with her and sometimes she'd say, you know, BB, she called me BB because of my, lo my long yeah. last name. And she said, besides Bridget Bardot doesn't use it anymore. <laughs> but she'd say, oh, I've got to go and I have to cook dinner. That's the kind of a person she is. Right. Now, how old is she now? In her 80s? She will be 85 in April. Wow. It's really astounding when you, when you look back on her career because she was an icon as far as Hollywood was concerned as a mm -hmm. child and then mm -hmm. became a UN ambassador. Uh, well, she was the chief of protocol, yes. first female chief of pro protocol at the White House and an ambassador to Ghana in the 70s mm -hmm. and Czechoslovakia later. And she also founded the International Multiple Sclerosis Society, and a lot of people didn't know that part of her. So since this is a San Francisco History Museum, what's the connection between Shirley Temple and San Francisco? Well, for instance, she was on the board of the film festival along with Claude Jarman, who is another a friend also, and child star. Mm -hmm. But also she lives in uh, the Bay Area. She lives in Woodside. Wow. Now, you also have some other things in the museum. Like, I know, for instance, one of my favorite things is you have uh, uh, a wax figure from the Wax Museum at Fisherman's Wharf that depicts the Emperor Norton. But there's an interesting backstory there, I understand. So not only tell, tell the uninitiated who was Emperor Norton and why is this wax figure unique? Well, Emperor Norton was a man who lived uh, during the Civil War era and he lost all of his fortune after the Civil War. And what I've been told is he went a little 
crazy and would walk the streets and he was in tattered clothing but everyone who knew him knew who he had been and they wanted to honor him with free meals and what have you so he actually in fact I could show you here on our ticket we have a, a, a copy of his Emperor Norton money that he would hand <laughs> out to people so he printed his own money and he'd say well you know I, I want to use this for my my pie today and they, they would use it as payment because he was kind of a San Francisco character so people took pity on him well, I don't know. I guess that, but he was he was a character, and he would walk the streets of San Francisco. And did he have a dog that followed him? That I don't know. Uh -huh. That I don't know. But I, I do know that the wax figure, uh, thank you, Rodney Fong, and the and the wax museum, uh, started out as Tom Hanks. And so what's funny about that is. Uh, I first saw it and I said, you know, he looks like someone I know. Well, I went to school with Tom Hanks. I was in <laughs> South Pacific, the play, in 1974 with Tom Hanks. So uh, I put it together and I've seen him only once since then. But yes, if you come and see Emperor Norton, there are shades of Tom Hanks. Well, that's he was the Tom Hanks reject who was reused. Yeah, he was yeah. repurposed. Well, and that happens in, in, in the collection of wax figures. For instance, if you go to the Wax Museum at Fisherman's Wharf yeah. and you look at Cleopatra, it is Cleopatra, but it's actually Liz Taylor. Uh, as, as, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, our, our museum includes exhibits such as the 1906 earthquake, the Barbary Coast, uh, the Gold Rush, the Panama Pacific Exposition, and then also some Hollywood things that are from my collection. Mm -hmm. This in particular. Well, th this I find fascinating. Uh, and I, when you walked in, I said, I know Barry. It's from some famous movie, maybe from the most famous movie about San Francisco, or I think the movie in which San Francisco looks the most beautiful, Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Well, it, it's close, because in the movie, she tears it apart and throws it into San Francisco Bay before she jumps in. But what happened was, in the 90s, when I worked for a local newspaper, we recreated this uh -huh. for a photo shoot at the Palace of the Legion of Honor, and we seated a model on the bench exactly where Kim Novak a.k.a. Madeline, gazes at the portrait of Carlotta Valdez, which, if you all know the, the mm -hmm. film, that's the significance of this bouquet. This, this bouquet is what Carlotta holds in, in, in the, the painting. In the painting. And then she goes to Podesta Baldaki, Kim Novak, and, and James Stewart follows her around the city. Now, what happened was I almost tossed this, and I said, you know what? If I do, I'm going to meet Kim Novak. And you know what? I met Kim Novak one month later, and, and she autographed it. So this is Kim Novak's signature. Yes, and I have pictures the the moment she signed it. And I told her, I'm the curator of this new museum. Will you come and we'll unveil it? And she said, sure. She lives you know, what, up in, in what Oregon. What is it about you and Hollywood legends? You attract them like a magnet. I mean, it, you were uh, friends with uh, Jane Russell. You've met yeah. Shirley Temple Black. I mean... I think I have, you know, everybody has a chakra connected to something. For me, uh, my life has just sort of clicked in that area. You know, something that just popped into my mind that you'll find fascinating as a historian yeah. connected to this, uh, Flax Art and Design, the great art store in San oh, yeah. Francisco, uh -huh. 75 years old this year. I just found out the other day that in the movie Vertigo, Kim Novak comes into Flax, their original store, which was next to uh, the florist. Oh, Podesta. Yeah. So there's. Oh, really? So when you go into Flax now, there's this picture of Kim Novak. You're like, why is she there? Oh, They're like, really? well, she walked in our store and oh, actually wow. bought some purple paper from the founder of Flax. And he was so flummoxed, he looked up and said, who's this beautiful woman? They're like, it's Kim Novak. And she bought paper from him. Well, you they know, said he never got over it. You know what's so eerie? If you know the movie, she appears screen left in profile the first time uh, Stuart sees her. Well, when I had this in my hands, I was at this event, and I'm not even thinking about it, and all of a sudden I look up, and there she appeared in front of me from left to right <laughs> in that profile, yeah. and I, I stopped her and said, oh, wait, uh, it, it's you, it's you, and she was so sweet and nice, and her publicist is the one who arranged later, and she said, of course she'll sign it, she'd love to sign right. it. Um, what's this? This is a vintage radio from the 1930s. It's from our room dedicated uh, to radios from the collection of Man J. Kim, our owner. And uh, it's, it's a pre-Bakelite. So before plastic was Bakelite, this is very rare. It's pre-Bakelite. Wow. So um, we also have a room all dedicated to slot machines. Did you know that slot machines were invented in San Francisco? No, it doesn't surprise me. We have a hippie <laughs> generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. You know, at, we've got the, the lava lamp and yeah. the peacock chair and all that. Now, something else you have is uh, some memorabilia from the TV film icon Rock Hudson. And, of course, yeah. Rock Hudson uh, doesn't need an introduction, but many people don't realize for many years he stored and starred in the 
a wonderful TV series, Macmillan Wife, that was set in San Francisco, and he filmed here, he partied here. Talk a little bit about that, but really specifically in our last few moments, yep. I understand that you have a revelation, which I think a lot of people are going to find quite shocking, about well, the death of Rock Hudson. Well, it's something that his assistant has been telling me for the last seven years. And, uh, you know, we have items belonging to Rock Hudson, his lamp and his Halloween costume and so forth. But he told me, he said, Rock Hudson uh, did not die of AIDS. And he said that he kept this a secret. For, his assistant was told to keep it a secret for 25 years after his death. Which and, we're now coming up on, correct? And, uh, we've just passed it, I believe. But the, the realization was the information went public that he had AIDS. And uh, my, what I was told is that Rock Hudson went to Spain and at that time, a doctor uncovered that he actually had cirrhosis of the liver. And to quote his assistant, he said his liver was the size of a postage stamp. It had, it had just been eaten away. So when they realized that this is why he's so ill and so gaunt, he, the humanitarian that he was, said, don't tell the public. They all think I've got AIDS. I'm going to help this cause, and I want to help this cause. So his assistant, who whose name you uh, can't reveal, which I understand, now lives in Palm Springs. Yes. He's older. Uh -huh. Did you push back and say, well, come on. I mean, the reason, when people also didn't know Rock Hudson was gay. When he came out as being ill with AIDS, it also mm -hmm. he came out of the closet. I mean, why would he continue to keep that stigma? Well, I think anyone who knows his assistant and he's pretty well known knows that he's telling the truth and he's very open about it. In fact, many times I've asked him, I said, maybe there will be the right time where we can talk about this through the unveiling of his memorabilia at the History Museum. He's in his 80s and uh, mm -hmm. over 85 and he said, sure, tell the story because how else am I going to tell this story? Mm -hmm. So uh, the last time I saw him was late last year and I told him that at the right time I would like to and he said, Please do. There's no reason not to tell the story. Well, I would love it if you, if you would invite him to be on the show. Certainly to have Rock Hudson's assistant yeah. uh, would be quite something. Did he say what it was like for Rock when people discovered that Rock was gay? or was it, did, he think, did he say that Rock thought it was a relief? or? No, we never talked about that. I mean, he had a lot of friends. Uh, I understand that uh, you know he made his way around uh, he was the, the community. <laughs> but from what I understand is they all got along very well. and. Uh, I will tell you that this gentleman's partner was an actor, and they were like the Three Musketeers. Wow. They, they were together everywhere. And I even have Rock Hudson's video of his 50th birthday. Well, that hopefully will have you on, <laughs> and we can look at it the next time you're on. Always a pleasure having you on, Barry, and I hope we can actually make an introduction between Rock and his Rock's assistant. Thanks. We've been speaking to Barry Barsamy about history, Rock Hudson, and other things. I'm David Perry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on 10%.